If, like millions of people around the world, you love the lunchbox, I've got great news for you. Director <laughs> <laughs> Ritesh millions. Patra. Millions. Yes, my friend, millions. Okay. It was the highest grossing, one of the highest uh -huh. grossing in the US. I think so. I didn't. I didn't uh, see much give a money, tab on the but <laughs> 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 none of it came to me. But <laughs> but we know there were millions. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So he's just thousands. No, no. He's just being modest. It wasn't. A th it wasn't thousands. It was hundreds. <laughs> it was definitely millions. He is now. It wasn't thousands. It was hundreds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hundreds uh, of thousands. <laughs> tens of. <laughs> so he's just finished putting, well, he's in the process of putting the finishing touches on his second film, The Sense of an Ending. It's based on a prize winning, on an award winning novel by Julian Barnes. Um, and I have to tell them that uh, at, in February at the European film market, uh, distributors saw footage from the movie, not the whole movie, just footage. And by the next morning, this film had sold out across the world, everywhere this film had gone. Mm -hmm. What did that feel like, Ritesh? Or are you now used to sort of things like this happening? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, not really. I'm not used to anything really. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. The thing is that we, at that time I was so into the movie and making it and the edit and trying to make it work. Uh, so it was very strange. But you know, the good thing is that when you're working on a movie, it was different in Lunchbox because we finished it and we went to Cannes and then the same thing happened but it was I after remember. we screened it. But it is uh, you, I remember you told me I think that while the screening of the Lunchbox was on, you suddenly there was a flurry and people started to leave mm -hmm. and you thought that oh my god they don't like the movie but actually it was just sales agents running out to book the film. Yeah, yeah, that's what, I, that's what we heard. Uh, but uh, so yeah, I think in this this time it was a little strange to know that it's not finished yet and, and, and people are going to watch it because uh, you know they've bought it so they have to <laughs> put it out there. So uh, it, it, was, it was strange, it was kind of in a weird way, it was not pressure but it was, it's a privilege really but uh, it's really, I mean it is pressure in a sense, you know, it's pressure about, uh, uh, I mean you know you have a good movie in the can, at least you're not a biased audience for it but, but you feel you have something good in your hands but when you put it out there, it's only then that you find out how it's going to, whether it's going to float or what's going to happen to it. But, uh, no, but it's different. It's different. Uh, it's very strange and different feeling to know that your film, your work is actually going to be watched for sure, whether it's good or not. Do you find yourself a very um, different director on the second one than you were on the first? Ha has there been a lot of mm -hmm. evolution in terms of your thought process or your style? I think so. I think so. But, but I, I don't think I've. Uh, I've learned a lot, I think, about working with actors, and also I think what's been good is that I didn't write this, uh, so I was f I felt more free, because it's very hard to separate the writer and the director. So on Lunchbox, I always found myself, uh, I had to work really hard to be the director and not the writer, to stop rewriting and just stick to directing it. Uh, but on this movie, that was easier. Uh, I was just directing and working with the actors, and also trying to recognize how every actor works, so the way uh, Jim works and what his process is is very different from Charlotte Rampling's and it's very different from Michelle Dockery who's done this great show, you know, Downtown Abbey and, and she's worked in that for I think seven or eight years and then she did our movie and uh, so everyone's used to a different way of working and also has a different process as an actor. Uh, so to be able to recognize that, finally I was also able to carry some things over, like uh, the way uh, Irfan works, I think, is very similar to the way Char Charlotte Rampling works. Really? How so? Uh, it's it's hard to articulate for me because I don't have their instrument, so I'm not I'm not inside their heads. But uh, but the way the kind of discussions we would have and how she would respond to something I said uh, would be it would come at you know because some actors it depends on their training, uh, but especially over here in the UK, actors come from a place of text. Uh, so they've really found a way into it through the text uh, of the dialogue and you know uh, they're very wedded to it um, and, and for good for good reasons and that's their process but with Charlotte and also with Irfan I found that it was a lot about talking about the character and, and where they are at the time and, and the text was almost secondary in our work and it was very nice and we kind of rediscovered her character on set she and I together, there was, was the second day we were shooting, there was a scene we worked on 
at the National Theatre here. It was in a restaurant uh, with Jim. And for both of us, it was just a revelation, a, a new revelation into her character. Uh, she plays Veronica in the so movie. So she, she, as an actor, is sort of more open to improvising and evolving and kind yeah, of more, changing. Yeah, I think everyone is open to discovery. But I think I found with her and Irfan, it was just, uh, uh, there was just a room to make a huge discovery. And it wouldn't be, you know, uh, unknowing in any way. It wouldn't be, it would they would just embrace, you know. And with Irfan too, we, we were working on Lunchbox. Uh, we had, he had trained for, you know, uh, hockey, uh, field hockey. And uh, we were supposed to shoot a scene with him dribbling with a ball on his patio. And on the day, uh, I got there and I thought, well, this doesn't make any sense based on all the work we've done. He should just be sitting and listening to the radio. And that's what he did. And he was just up for it. He, was, he just sat there on the armchair and he listened to the radio instead of, you know, uh, playing hockey. And, and that's the kind of, um, it's, it's a big, it's a big change sort of in, in the journey of that character. You know, it's, it's one thing versus another. But I found them very receptive to doing that and, and, and not just doing that, to find a way into it organically. So, uh, but no, I was able to carry over some things and not carry over others. And also this movie has just a lot of people. Everyone has a younger version. So it's set in the 60s and in the present day. So just uh, having you know those two things in your head all the time was a new burden to carry, you know, the flashbacks world versus the present day world. Uh, and how that's going to intermingle. So that was something new that I didn't do last time. So, so lots of challenges. Yeah, yeah, it, but it was very exciting, it was very exciting. You know, I'd asked uh, Priyanka Chopra, um, what is the one thing she would transpose from the West to India, if she could? Uh -huh. um, and she said the, um, the sort of emphasis on the text, the writing, Sure. You know, the, 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 the kind of focus on the writing. I, would you agree, is that the one thing you think that we really need to kind of put into place? No, of course. Yeah, you know, I think screenwriting is such an American art form. Uh, to say that while making a British movie. But it is, it is really an American art form, you know, uh, what, uh, what the American industry uh, since the 40s has done to screenwriting. And uh, I think that emphasis on on the writer's work and uh, I think that's something definitely like, and I, I wouldn't make anything unless I had spent a couple of years writing it. it. It takes that long. It takes, you know, two, three, four years of developing something to make it good enough to make. Uh, but, but I think that, that discipline can only be enforced if, you know, people are getting paid enough to write for that much, that long, you know. Uh, it's not this, you know, uh, I remember once, before I made Lunchbox, I came to Bombay with the script and I, I was like, you know, well, this movie is not going to be easy to get made. So probably I can stay back and, you know, do something else. And the term that I heard a lot was, uh, was very interesting. It was just chapo. <laughs> 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 so a lot of people I would meet would tell me, you know, this is what uh, we'd like you to do, you know, and uh, three weeks and, you know, just chapo it and, and bring it back. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a very technical, <laughs> it's a very technical <laughs> term, uh, but I think that, uh, that if that could stop, I think, uh, I, I think she's right. Definitely. We need to stop chapoing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what do you miss most about Mumbai? Uh, I miss the energy, I miss the sun. Uh, there's no sun here, as you know. Um, it's also very easy, I think, to, it's very, Bombay is very difficult to get around. Uh, you know, London is very easy to get around. But Bombay is very easy to get in. You know, you get in with people, form communities, and argue, and uh, you know, joke. And uh, uh, there's a there's a really nice reserve here. So you could actually be here for many years and not get to know anyone. Uh, but I don't think that's possible in Bombay. You know, you no. You get to know everyone. Everyone not makes happening. sure you know <laughs> that they get to know you and they get to know what you're doing and. <laughs> what you ate and you know what happened in your house that morning and uh, but I, I really miss that actually I really that's what I miss most about, about Bombay. <laughs> thank you Ritesh. Oh, thank you. And thank we you. can't wait to see the sense of an ending. Yeah in, in Bombay hopefully. Absolutely yeah. thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video hit the button below subscribe to Film Companion and get your film fix.